Hello everyone. I'm Jake. Today I will share image to mesh workflows that I created. This table lists the nine multi-view generation algorithms included in Comfy UI 3D Pack. I grouped CRM, 0123 Plus, MV Dream, and Character Gen in the green area. Except for CRM, all of them only generate color multi-views. CRM can also generate coordinate multi-views. Unique 3D, Wonder 3D, and Era 3D in the blue area are of the same category and can generate two sets of multi-views of color and normal. 0123 and SV3D in the gray area can generate any number of color multi-views. The number of azimuth angle counts multiplied by the number of elevation angle counts is the number of multi-views. I have three image-to-mesh workflows corresponding to the three categories mentioned above. This table lists the workflow operation framework. TripoSR is very intuitive and does not require the generation of multiple views to generate a mesh directly, so it will not be introduced in the video. The image to mesh has four steps, multi-view generation, mesh reconstruction, mesh optimization, and texture refinement. The table shows the algorithms of four steps in operable combinations. Each row is a sub-workflow. For the disassembly of the image to mesh, you can watch my other video, Comfy UI 3D Pack Algorithm Comparison. In addition to the image to mesh, there is also the image to ply to mesh. Triplane is very intuitive and does not require the generation of multiple views to generate a ply model directly, so it will not be introduced in the video. 3D Pack provides large multi-view Gaussian model, LGM, and Gaussian splatting 3D which can convert multi-views into ply files and then convert them into meshes through the four methods listed. Next, I will introduce the first workflow which includes CRM, 0123 plus, MV Dream, and Character Gen. Press the backtick key next to number one to switch to the main control panel quickly. This parameter controls the workflow switching and determines which multi-view generation algorithm is selected. The four algorithms correspond to numbers 1 to 4. The generation panel gathers and arranges all generation functions according to process order and type. Number 00 is image preprocessing. Number 01 is CRM. Number 02 is 0123 plus, and so on. Each workflow is divided into one or more substeps, such as the four steps of upscale, the six steps of unique 3D, the three steps of instant NGP, and the three steps of flexi cubes. Because image to mesh consumes RAM and VRAM, enable the corresponding steps as needed and disable or bypass unnecessary ones. In addition, disable the step after it is generated and enable the loading switch of the corresponding steps result in the load panel. For example, disable the generate CRM MVs switch after the generation and enable the corresponding load CRM MVs switch. The bypass step is the CRM multi-view generation step and the one enabled above is the loading step. This will minimize resource usage. Next, I will take CRM as an example to demonstrate the specific operation. This image has an alpha channel and does not need image preprocessing. Enable the group that generates the CRM multi-view and run the queue according to the default settings. The generated results will be stored in the project path. Under the output directory, there is a subdirectory named after the project name. The workflow will categorize the output results according to the algorithms and steps. The multi-views of CRM are in the MV subdirectory of CRM. Copy the absolute path, disable the generation group, and enable the loading group. Enter the path name and run the queue to load the images. Next, generate the coordinate multi-view CCM, enable the generation group and run the queue. After the CCM is generated, disable the generation group, enable the loading group, and load the results. Enable the CRM mesh generation group and run the queue. The generated mesh is stored in the mesh subdirectory of CRM. Next, we upscale the multi-views for texture refinement and other mesh reconstructions. The upscale process consists of four steps. If you want depth control net to control the upscale sampling, you must use steps one and three or steps two and three. 
The second step is CRM's proprietary method for obtaining depth, calculated using its coordinate map. The depth values of the six images all match the spatial coordinates, which is more accurate than the depth estimation based on a single two-dimensional image. Let's try using depth anything to generate depth maps. Depth anything will have a more even depth transition. Disable both generate groups and enable the loading group. Enable the depth control net group and upscale group. The upscale process assembles four or six multiviews into a single image in 2x2 or 2x3 format and then applies IP adapter constraints. After sampling, it is split into individual images and output after secondary upscale. The multiviews are upscaled. To get the most accurate results, the front view uses the upscaled original image without sampling. A white background has been added. The positions of the front view image of different algorithms in the multiview sequence are different. The front view angle means the azimuth and pitch angle are zero. The front view of CRM is the last one. 0123 plus does not have a front view. Dreams is the first and character gens is the last one. There is a switch function in the step to automatically handle the arrangement of the front view of different algorithms. Using the upscaled multiviews to complete the texture refinement is introduced in the video image to mesh, comfy UI plus texture projector. Here I demonstrate how to use them to continue mesh reconstruction. Mesh reconstruction algorithms such as instant mesh require white background images. So all the upscaled CRM multiviews gray backgrounds have been turned into white. The result of instant mesh reconstruction looks strange. The FOV of CRM is 90 degrees in orthogonal mode, while the algorithm of instant mesh reconstruction is based on perspective. In addition, the reconstruction of the instant mesh does not support the elevation angle of 90 degrees or minus 90 degrees, that is, the two multiviews of the top and bottom of the CRM so only four images are available, and the sampling is insufficient. This node reorders the batch of images, removing the top and bottom images. This camera pose node provides the camera transform properties corresponding to the CRM multiview. This node reorders the batch of poses, removing the top and bottom poses. 0123 plus has six multiviews, and the reconstruction result using instant mesh are good. In addition, the reconstruction results of Wonder 3D and Era 3D combined with instant mesh are also good. Next, Let's look at the mesh reconstruction using instant NGP. Generate masks for multiviews and run the queue. The reconstructed mesh was generated using instant NGP and six multiviews and mask images. Many faces of the mesh are missing. This may be due to insufficient image sampling or reconstruction accuracy. However, due to VRAM limitations, I cannot increase the accuracy. Please note that running instant NGP repeatedly can cause the Comfy UI to freeze and require a reboot. This may also be due to my VRAM limitations. The last step of the image to mesh is the texture refinement. 3D Pack provides nodes such as fitting mesh with multi-view images. But I can't run it locally. I listed the error information in the note. Next, try the unique 3D workflow to generate normal maps using the upscaled CRM multiviews. Please note that unique 3D supports views in four orthogonal axes, and the azimuth angles must be in order. Therefore, a preprocessing step is required before generation, extracting four orthogonal axial views and adjusting the order. For example, the multiviews of CRM are loaded in the order of 5, 3, 2, 0, which becomes the sequence required by Unique 3D. Enable the Unique 3D normal map generation and upscale group and run the queue. 
I combined the unique 3D normal map generation and normal map upscale into one group or step. For normal maps and masks were generated. The normal maps are very accurate and you can see the orientation of the model surface. After loading the normal maps and masks, the first step of unique 3D mesh reconstruction is to generate the model based on the normals. This model looks strange and cannot be used directly. The next step is to perform explicit target mesh optimization based on this mesh. Unfortunately, I can't do this step locally due to my VRAM limitations. The algorithms marked in red in this table are those I cannot implement locally and require high VRAM support. The last two steps of Unique 3D cannot be demonstrated, but as long as the official workflow can run, this workflow can run normally. FlexiCubes is a very interesting node that uses depth maps and normal maps to reconstruct the mesh. The depth and normal information must be accurate to obtain a fine mesh. The normal information generated by Unique 3D should be accurate, but the depth information generated by depth anything based on a single image may not be, after all, it does not consider the relationship between each other. This reminds me of the depth map generated by CRM based on the coordinate map, which should be accurate. Although my computer can run this FlexiCubes node, it never stops running or provides a result for mesh reconstruction. I was unable to test my idea. FlexiCubes has been running for almost two hours and nothing is happening, so I gave up. Next, I will demonstrate the process of using 0123 Plus with Instant Mesh. On a bright sunny day, the birds start to sing. As the gentle breeze blows, it dances on my skin. I feel the warmth of the sun filling up the air It's like a symphony of nature everywhere The sound of the waves crashing along the shore The rustle of leaves as they fall to the floor The rhythm of raindrops hitting the ground It's a harmony of nature's music all around Let's take a look at the third workflow, which includes 0123 and SV3D. The elevation angle remains at zero, there are 20 azimuth angles, and a total of 20 multiviews. When using SV3D, please note that the azimuth frame counts cannot be too low. The default value of 21 means 20 frames, and the first and last frames are the same front view. In addition, the elevation angle needs to be maintained at zero. The result is not good when it is not zero.
One more thing, SV3D generates 21 frames in a batch, but the workflow only loads 20 useful frames and excludes the last frame. I have reserved four groups of elevation angle batches, which can theoretically achieve a function similar to 0123, generate elevation angle batches one by one, and then combine them into a large batch. Of course, the last image in each batch is discarded. There are two prerequisites for the realization of this function. First, the result of SV3D based on non-zero elevation angles must be enhanced, and second, its elevation parameter needs to support list format. However, after testing, these two prerequisites are not met at present. You can manually change the elevation angle value from start to end, generate batch by batch, the workflow will save them in order if you want different elevation angles. The last workflow is for generating a Gaussian splatting process. When the file is opened, ignore the error message that the DMTET node is missing. This is a node that 3 d Pack has deprecated but I think it is necessary to keep. The workflow usage is the same so I will not explain. Thanks for watching.